This is the latest generation of the VBAT. It's our latest block upgrade. The major features that are now on board this VBAT, one, uh, autonomy capabilities, not only being autonomy ready, but we have GPS denied, communications denied, uh, autonomy capabilities on it. This is the same that we ran in Ukraine where we targeted a Russian SA-11 Bukovel surface air missile system while GPS and communications were being denied. Second thing that I would point out on it is the heavy fuel engine, which is the common fuel used across every single Navy in the entire world um, is using a heavy fuel engine. It's a requirement for most maritime programs of record. Next thing I'll point to is the uh, the SATCOM, uh, now SATCOM capable. Uh, we use uh, beyond visual range uh, operations. Um, and then it's got improved endurance. It's got a great set of new landing legs, which are really, really cool. Actually uses the same technology in the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, crush core technology um, that's used. Actually, our, uh, our lead engineer came from the SpaceX community, saw how we were landing VBAT, saw how SpaceX was uh, did it, and we decided to implement the same methodology for our uh, landing legs. And so now, completely autonomous launch and land capabilities coming out of this latest generation of the VBAT. We now have 13 hours of endurance, which is uh, an upgrade of where we were carrying uh, a fully missionized VBAT, almost 25 pounds of payload. Um, but um, what I think about pr principally is like, what's gonna matter in the future fight? It is those GPS denied, communications denied operations. We still haven't found, our customers haven't found other players in this space that have proven that ability to fight when GPS is jammed, while communications is jammed. VBAT has done this time and time and time again, have done over 127 sorties in Ukraine. We recently were at Project Convergence 5. We defeated the electronic warfare fair systems there. And so I think we run into a lot of players saying, hey, we're going to do that. It's on our roadmap. I would say we've done it. We've done it so many times. It's part of the capability that everybody can buy today. The core mission of the VBAT is it is an intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance asset. Um, it is doing the mission of much more expensive Group 4, Group 5 aircraft. It's doing the mission of even manned aircraft for a fraction of that price. And so it's looking for targets, it's finding, it's fixing, um, it's uh, localizing those targets, and then ideally it's calling back to a long-range weapon system in the uh, DOD context, right? Not in the U.S. Coast Guard context necessarily. Um, but once it, it finds those targets and fixes it, we're calling in long-range fires like we did in Ukraine, calling in HIMARS to uh, engage a surface-to-air missile system. From the VBAT, we have launched kinetic effects from it. We've launched uh, Northrop Grumman uh, hatchet uh, munition. It's about a six pound laser guided rocket, ar armor piercing uh, rocket. That weaponized capabilities will be commercially available next year for the aircraft. So it's not on our roadmap this year in terms of a commercialized capability. We've done it. We've done it for customers before, uh, but in terms of something being ready to ship, ready to rock, like our, uh, like our electronic warfare capabilities where we're navigating GPS communications, um, the weapon, like we don't like to advertise things that we're not shipping yet. This block upgrade is in production. It's what we're shipping out of our manufacturing facility, the Bat Cave in Frisco, Texas, in Dallas, Texas. Um, but every customer now buying a VBAT is getting this block upgrade. So you get all this great capability. You can put three of them in the black, uh, the back of a, a Seahawk helicopter. Uh, these, you can operate this out of a Sprinter van, uh, which is what we did in Ukraine. Full, like the entire aircraft, GCS, everything. Tiny footprint, why is that important? It's a move or die world out there. Uh, there, you know, in pure conflict, uh, you have to move your assets regularly, every five minutes, every 10 minutes. Otherwise, you're getting a missile, a rocket on your position. That's what we see happening in Russia, Ukraine. That is certainly what's going to happen in the Pacific. If you are not mobile, you are a sitting target.
What do you think about Hive Mind? We have our Hive Mind pilot, which is actually flying the aircraft. That's what you see in the background here. Uh, it's on a GPU that's fit into uh, the avionics stack. It's talking to the autopilot. It's telling the autopilot what to do, commanding it, maneuvering the aircraft. Um, we build Hive Mind pilot with Hive Mind Enterprise, which is our uh, developer software suite. Um, it's a case of we built these developer tools, we built the infrastructure, we built the pipelines. Um, we've been using them ourselves, and now we have made it commercially available uh, to other OEMs, to governments, people who want to supercharge their autonomy efforts, who want to make, you know, build it faster, cheaper, better. That's what Hive Mind Enterprise is about. Um, and so we want to work with every single prime contractor out there, every single vehicle manufacturer, air, land, sea, space. We want to work with you all. If you have, if autonomy is important, which we're seeing it is more and more from every single customer, we want to help you make your system, make your aircraft, make your vehicle autonomous. That's what Hive Mind Enterprise is about. Hive Mind Enterprise consists of four different parts. Uh, number one is Edge OS. This is the building blocks. These are uh, the, the Legos that you're connecting together to actually build autonomy. Uh, the second part is Hive Mind Pilot, which is the autonomy stack that actually goes on the aircraft. Um, right, that's what you see flying the, the VBAT here. It's what we've flown MQ-20, F-16, um, loitering munitions, our quadcopter with. That's the autonomy stack on board the aircraft. This is all part of the Hive Mind Enterprise ecosystem. System. But Hivemind Forge is our autonomy factory, our AI factory. This is where the development takes place. This is where you're testing, evaluating uh, your, your system, your autonomy blocks that you've built with EdgeOS. It's where you're testing your Hivemind pilot that you've built uh, with those building blocks um, and where you're getting those repetitions in, uh, training it across the number of different test scenarios that you actually build out. Um, and then the last part of Hivemind Enterprise is Hivemind Commander. This is is uh, an interface to enable things that have been built with HiveMind, Edge OS, HiveMind Pilot to connect into any C2 system. We are not uh, a C2 battle management company. We are an edge autonomy company that also builds an incredible aircraft. Um, and we want to connect into those different C2 systems. So HiveMind enabled systems can easily, readily connect into your C2 system of choice. HiveMind Enterprise is a, uh, it's a commercial autonomy development platform. If you are a commercial company building aircraft that are not for defense, we absolutely want to talk to you, right? And you think autonomy is important. Um, I, I fundamentally believe in a world of millions of autonomous systems. We want those autonomous systems built on the back of HiveMind Enterprise.